Today we'll be talking about how to set up content monitoring as well as on-the-go web filtering on your child's Android device. Our content monitoring alerts you about potential issues found on your child's texts, photos, videos, web browsing, searches, Snapchat, Instagram, and more. It uses machine learning to analyze context, not just keywords, to detect instances of depression, cyberbullying, self-harm, and anything else that may be alarming. Our screen time and web filtering, on the other hand, allows you to block inappropriate websites, set schedules of what apps and sites they can use at what times, and more. So by installing the Bark for Kids app on your child's Android, you'll be able to do both content monitoring and web filtering uh, if content monitoring is included on your plan. We'll go ahead and take care of both today. Let's get started. First, open up a web browser like Chrome on your child's Android device. Then you'll type in bark.us slash Android. You'll scroll down to download Bark for Kids. You'll be asked if you want to download the file. Once you give permission, tap on open. If you don't see that prompt about opening, try to scroll down from the top of the screen. You'll likely be able to open it that way as well. However, when you first try to open this file, you'll get a warning about downloading apps from unknown sources. In this case, I'm going to click on settings, select allow from the source, and then try again. And this time, I'll be able to tap install. If it still gives you a notice about being unable to install the app at this stage, it may mean that you're using Family Link. And Family Link just requires an extra setting to be changed to install Bark for Kids. Go to our help article and help video linked below for additional information on that Family Link setting. We'll go ahead and continue with the rest of the app setup. Then tap on open. Log in with your Bark parent credentials. This would be the email and password you used to first create your Bark account. If it says your email and password are incorrect, try to log into to your parental device. Verify that those credentials are correct. If still no luck, check that your child's device is connected to the internet. That's the other reason you may be getting that message. Once you log in, select your child that uses this device. If it's a shared device, by the way, like a tablet that they all use, consider creating a child that's named shared device or something to that effect. Then you'll see a few prompts asking for permission to different things. Tap allow on those prompts. If your child's Android is newer, you also see a prompt about disabling private DNS. Tap on settings and it'll take you right to it. Look for a private DNS option and make sure it's set to off if it isn't already. Once you've verified it's off, go back to the Bark for Kids app. It'll continue the setup. Next, it'll ask about establishing a VPN and you'll tap allow. Lastly, it'll ask about sharing the screen. Tap start now. When prompted about enabling accessibility, Tap open settings and it'll take you right to it. Look for bark and turn on bark in the accessibility settings. Return back to the Bark for Kids app and we're gonna tap on the check-in button just to make sure this feature works. You'll be asked about enabling location services. Once you enable it, you can tap on check-in once more and this time it'll check in. If you still can't check in, you likely need to just slide your finger down from the top of the screen and make sure that the location feature is enabled. Usually it has that little GPS symbol. Now here in this location, you'll also see that there's some persistent messages from the app that Bark is monitoring or that the VPN is filtering. Both of these things are great, but if you want to disable the persistent notification, you can, as you can see here. Moving on, let's open up Chrome and let's adjust a setting in there. This will allow Bark Kids to have the most chances to properly filter and monitor your child's Android web browsing. So when you open up Chrome, you go to the top right three dot menu, select settings, scroll down to privacy and security. Look for use secure DNS and make sure it's turned off if it isn't already. Then you can click back a couple times, go back to the Bark for Kids app, and we're on the finish line here. 
We're gonna tap on the bottom right gear icon. Prompted for your parental password. You'll enter it and it'll allow you to see this settings section where you can tap test monitoring. If it says looks good, you're all set. That's exactly right. You can also go here to check for updates to the app uh, that will release periodically uh, and verify that you assigned the correct child to this device. Last section of the Bark Kids app that we'll discuss here is this middle button, the smiley face. If they tap on it, they're able to connect accounts for monitoring themselves. Uh, this is convenient for a couple different reasons. One is that uh, they don't have to share their passwords with you, but they can still get accounts monitored for worrisome content. And if something alarming happens on those social and email accounts, you will be alerted. Uh, let's do one last thing. So uh, throughout the process as a parent or guardian, you set screen time rules and a screen time schedule. And you may be wondering if uh, those rules are being enforced properly. Uh, you can test that really easily by going on the child's device to screentime.report. From there, scroll down to the app or site you're looking to test. Uh, let's say that you've blocked sexual content. If I tap on sexual content, after some time, I should see that this site can't be reached, telling me that uh, any site categorized under sexual content, which is hundreds of thousands or millions of sites in our database, uh, will be blocked from being accessed on your child's Android device. That's it. If you have any additional questions about monitoring Android, don't hesitate to reach out to us at help at bark.us.